Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing this beautiful blue Himalayan poppy and we're doing it in Georgian water mixable oil paints. And I'm doing this a little bit differently today because in previous videos when I've used these paints I've always used them with a little touch of linseed oil or even a tiny touch of water on my brush to make them flow across the paper a little bit more. Today I'm using them in a more impasto style, trying to keep things loose and just sketching without doing a drawing to begin with, just using the paint straight onto the paper, having a little bit of fun, trying to get some texture in there and just building things up as I go along without getting it too muddy, which can be um, a problem when you put as much paint on as I have done today. So to begin with, the paper that I'm using is an oil paper and it's by Fabrio Arno and it's called Tila, T-E-L-A. Um, and it's only a small one, it's seven inch by nine and a half inch. And the nice thing about this is it's got quite a grain to the paper, so your oil paints really stick to it. But you will see, because I'm using them in pasto and I'm not adding anything to them, when I start putting on the colour, I've really got to work the brush to get that paint into that uh, paper. But it is a really nice, um, good paper to work with. It's it gummed all the way around, so once you finish your picture, you can just lift it off um, and really good to work on being gummed all the way around. You don't have to worry about taping it to a board or anything like that. So it's a nice paper, just enough texture really and not too much. And it's £140 in weight. So the colours that I'm using, I've got cadmium yellow. Uh, sorry, I'm telling you a lie there. I've got lemon yellow, cadmium red, titanium white, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue and then at the end I do add some of the burnt umber just to get a little bit darker just to pick up some of the highlights of the flower. The brush I'm using is a Royal Taclon brush and you'll notice that it's a flat brush. The great thing about this is using a flat brush you can get plenty of colour on. You can load the brush and use it on its use as a flat brush to put apply plenty of colour but then you can also use it on its end and get a nice bit of definition and some line as well and you'll see I, I get quite a lot of paint on the brush at the end and just put some little white highlights on getting quite a bit of texture in there actually and leaving it quite in pasto. So all these, although when I did the review of these oil paints I said how nice and smooth they were compared to the Windsor & Newton Artisan water mixable oil paints, you can use them in an impasto style if you want to. Now the nice thing about these Royal Taclon brushes, there's two benefits to them really. One is they're relatively inexpensive um, and they're a synthetic brush so they're quite nice and tough. But the other thing is, you'll notice, and I have mentioned this before in previous videos, that they've got a nice shape to the end of the brush, which you can use to move the paint around the paper. You can use to add some line and some interest and to, even to scrape the paint off if you've gone wrong. So they're really, really handy. Obviously always have a tissue to the side as well to um, wipe your brush when you've done this because it's very easy after you've done that to carry on using the brush in your traditional way and getting that paint on your sleeve or whatever. So always have a tissue and just wipe that off after you've done it. But great for using like a spatula, um, scraping paint off and reapplying paint as well with that end. So each brush, depending on the size of the brush, that can be quite a different shape as well. Um, you know, if it's a, it's a lot thinner, it can be used for different things. So a really handy tip is to use that. And if you haven't got that, you can use a spatula or something else that you might have, a palette knife, whatever, just to get a little bit more texture in there. You'll also you see that I use another brush, a soft brush. So whenever I'm doing an oil painting, I have two types of brush, the one for applying and also the one for blending and softening. In something like this, you don't want to do too much blending. Um, you know, we want to try and keep it really loose and just have some fun applying the paint and applying it really thickly without getting too muddy like I say. So towards the end of the video I've got an awful lot of paint on that paper and if I wasn't careful I could really overwork it and go too far with it. Because I didn't do any drawing initially you will see that the drawing's a bit skew if the bottom petal isn't quite right but that doesn't matter nobody's going to see the reference photograph afterwards they're just going to see the picture that you've produced so don't get too hung up on your drawing and the great thing about oil paints is you can correct it so you could have scraped off the bottom part of that petal and redrawn it if you wanted to. Obviously I'm you know, wanting to do things quite quickly so I just carried on and didn't worry about that. With regards to the reference photo I will of course put that down in the description below. If you're new to my channel um, I do always try and put the 
a link to the reference photographs so that you can work from them yourselves at home. But don't feel that you have to print the photograph off, of course. You can always just work from your laptop, your tablet or your phone, which is a great way to work because you're not wasting money printing the photograph off, but also you can zoom in and out to see the detail if you want to. But try and avoid with something like this getting too much detail. And try not to think of it as creating a finished per painting that has to be absolutely perfect. Think about it as an exercise where you're freeing yourself up and relaxing and trying to get a looser painting than you perhaps might normally do by not worrying too much. And again, another good way to keep your painting loose, if that's what you want to do, I know a lot of people do ask about getting your paintings more loose, is to use a bigger brush. Don't start using really teeny tiny brushes when you're doing something like this. Try and keep your colours separate. You'll notice I didn't mix much together on the actual palette um, other than those dark colours and the orange for the centre. I tended to mix them more on the paper and I kept those quite true blue colours really of the cerulean, cerulean and the ultramarine. I don't actually have a cobalt in this range but I perhaps should get one. Um, because this is such a true blue flower and that's one of the reasons why people like to grow this poppy actually is because it's such a true blue flower. So at the end of this, I didn't end up with a perfect painting by any means, but I ended up with a pleasing little picture, which I enjoyed doing. And that's the thing. And I've perhaps learned something for next time. And I've enjoyed applying that paint and getting used to knowing what these paints can do. And that's what it's all about. We must continue to practice, continue to have fun and we'll improve and develop our own style. So again, for those of the, you that are new to my channel, I'm here every Monday and Thursday afternoon in a variety of subjects and media. I've been doing quite a lot of watercolour recently, as I know a lot of you like using watercolour, especially with ink drawing as well. Um, so I've actually started a new course on Skillshare, or I'm doing a second course on Skillshare that's coming up this week. And I would like to say a very big thank you to all those who have watched my Skillshare course and actually gone through the course and enjoyed doing it, and for the lovely feedback that you've given me. It's very much appreciated. So with that in mind, I'm starting working on my next Skillshare course this week and hopefully I'll have that ready for you next week. Um, for those of you that haven't seen that course, I will link it down in the description below. It's doing a landscape in ink and watercolour and we're talking about things like perspective. It's a very simple one, broken down into stages so that you can work through it at your own pace and come back to it whenever you want. You don't have to do it all in one go. I've also put a page on my website with the links to my online courses where I'll be putting all the new ones up over time. So if you did want to see those, my website is callielawson.co.uk and of course that is listed down in the description below as well if you want to go over to my website. Also on there, there is um, you can subscribe to my newsletter, which I do about once a month. Sometimes it's more than less than once a month because I forget to do it. but. In the newsletter, I will put links to any new courses coming out. So if you wanted to be notified about those, that's the best way to do it. If you subscribe to my newsletter by email, and then you'll get news, not just on what I'm doing here in the studio, on new products and things like that, but also on courses that are coming up. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you have a get a chance to have a go at this yourself that would be great to hear how you get on with it and of course you could do it in another media you could use this photograph to do a watercolour with i'll be back again on monday with another tutorial or demonstration in the meantime enjoy your own painting and drawing thanks for joining me and bye for now